Welcome to Gamers Galaxy, episode 33. My name is WT, and you will be with me on this journey today. And I have my legendary friend with me, Rubik. How are you doing today, brother? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Uh, end of the week uh, at the time of recording, and looking forward to a, week a great weekend of uh, chilling out with the fam and taking my son to the pool for the first time ever. So that'll be fun. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, that, yeah, I remember those times with my kids. It's uh, it's always fun to see those new experiences with them and see the reactions as they are starting off into new things. That's part of the uh, part of the fun of being a dad. So I'm glad you're gonna get to experience that for sure. Yeah, um, it'll be fun. <laughs> another big week for Immutable. The the hits just keep coming. The the AKA uh, I put it this in sarcastic quotes. Pure announcements that they normally do. And I'm going to actually shuffle to my other screen here because they got to see our icons for a minute. And there we go. Uh, yeah, so... Mate, this content today was like, just a couple of days ago, you're like, do we have enough to do an episode? It's been, it's been a bit <laughs> quiet this week. And then all of a sudden, I just went, oh yeah, I'll just let me go over, skim some stuff. And it's like one of the biggest episodes ever, two days later. For, and and I, I'm pretty sure I haven't got everything that we co probably could cover. So it's it's crazy, this, this immutable news roundup. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, it's I asked that because normally there's so much coming at us that it's like, Every five, six days, it's like, well, we better do a, a podcast. Otherwise, we're going to get behind on everything that's coming out. And we went a few days longer than we normally do. I think because we were just so busy. And I asked the question because I was just like, what's... I, I was losing track of what was going on, honestly. And I kind of rely mm -hmm. on you for that. So I didn't hear from you. And so, yeah, that's why I asked that. And sure enough, uh, I load up the screen to look at what we're going to talk about. And it's like a whole roster of things. I got all my tabs up. And <laughs> the first tab right off the bat is... Turbo Turbo Battle Arena. Um, this game, I was looking at it, reminds me of a kind of a quirky old school Contra style game. If you know what that game is, you remember Contra by mm -hmm. chance? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Oh, it was on Nintendo. I absolutely love that game. Uh, this is a uh, action adventure 2D run and gun platform, but it's on the blockchain. Uh, it's got some quirkiness to it though. <laughs> it got like heads of like the board ape genre and several other things going on uh, have you had a chance to check this out at all yeah um it's it's you know the platformer side of things it's got destructible uh some of the the zones destructible so you can it looks so it's a little bit more modern than than you know the old school games right um uh, that's platformers so like you, you not every single spot's got you can, can destroy but like you know you'll have some ability to shoot something that falls on people's heads and things like that so it's it's actual and it's also pvp not pve well it might be pve as well i think it is but there's the main focus is the pvp and they're going for esports you know we'll oh. see how esports is always driven by community not by uh um the games developers that's the history so yeah. we'll see if they, if they can make that that yeah i didn't catch that it was pvp i thought it was pve but it, like now that i'm looking at it yeah i can definitely see it i love i love the little they must be custom heads that you can put on your characters because there's definitely a board ape flying around shooting things for sure. I'm looking at it's called Dark Ghost right now on the screen. If you're on the audio, you'll have to come over to YouTube channel to check it out, what I'm looking at. They also have, it looks like, a game zone in another game called Retro World. That reminded me of kind of like you're, you're hitting blocks and stuff like Mario Mario Brothers style. Did you see that by chance? Yeah, yeah, I saw that one as well, yeah. It's uh yeah they've got heaps of variety. It's not just PvP. There's a uh, is, is a number of game modes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we, a little a little fun one, a little indie game. So we'll see. It. Apparently they're doing a token release very soon, um, if not already. And um, yeah, the game in quarter. I think the roadmap in it goes out to the middle of point twenty five, and there's like a huge amount of like ambition there. So. Yeah. We'll see. I think you can play the game now. Yeah, I'm going to definitely Not... put this on my long, long list of games I have to play. 
<laughs> there's so many coming out from Immutable right now. And uh, yeah, there's the I'm showing the announcement right now that Turbo Battle uh, Arena is in partnership with Immutable. Not just a collaboration, but a turbo boost to our gaming universe. Uh, I like the little graphic they put up there. It's very, very gamey, old school style. I like it. And they got the nice uh, looking uh, Immutable logo there. Uh, next up, we've got Astronova. Um, this is, boy, this was interesting to me. It's a team of, from what their website says, 80 coming out of the Saudi Arabia area. A very, very slick website. Web3 RPG on Unreal Engine 5. And the one thing that really stood out to me is they're either on or they were on the Hedera network. I know about that network quite well. And looks like they're they're either at or coming to immutable uh your thoughts on this rubik yeah uh, I, i'm not well, we've seen this a lot where immutable announces games and we don't know if they're really coming or not um so a lot of if if they're ready to come out soon they they tend and they announce immutable then they tend to come out in immutable if it's, if it's a year out from their development it, you, sometimes they just disappear and never come so I don't know, this one looks like th that typical Unreal Engine 5 kind of engine, like kind of copy-paste kind of Lyra, but it's not a shooter, um, which was very surprising. Because I was looking at this video, and going, oh, that looks like another one of these shooters that all look the same. But it's actually uh, like an RPG, like in a, in a squad-based one as well. So like a Dungeons & Dragons style game in, in Unreal Engine 5. Oh. So uh, that... Definitely piqued my interest then, because you know me, I'm not, I can, I'm better with the sword than the gun. Um, so yeah, we'll see if it comes in Immutable. Uh, it wasn't announced by Immutable. It was announced by them, I believe, and Immutable responded. And um, yeah, came to do change, 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 or they go multi-chain. Um, but yeah, we'll see if they end up on. Yeah, I've got the uh, guy walking around right now with the sword on his back. Uh, the landscape looks pretty cool. This looks like. They're going for big, 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 big on their world here. Uh, kind of, not exactly, but kind of gave me a little bit of New Ganymede uh, vibes with the, the open world the way they have it. Um, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I'm, I'm really, I got to go back and look and see how they were involved with Hedera and what that is all about. If they're leaving them or they're still going to be on them. I mean, we know about the multi-chain stuff, but definitely piqued my interest as I, I do enjoy that network as well but uh yeah very very cool stuff uh from astronova what's what's the biggest game on hedera that you know of uh honestly they're not really i really wouldn't call them a gaming chain compared to like immutable they're not even close i know a lot of companies are trying to start up on their tech uh they're not it's not the typical blockchain over there. It's it's a it's a lot different. Um, mm. They're more into, at the moment, NFT projects. Kind of like uh, you know, it seems like maybe they're a little bit behind that. You know, they were into the JPEGs or not JPEGs. I'm sorry, just the you know, get this, get this uh, NFT in your in our club, and we're gonna build something phase. And I think they're evolving a little bit more beyond that now. But I, I really wouldn't be able to tell you like an exact game that i can go and play there at the moment i think galactico manages another one on immutables uh, multi-chain with them as well yeah um the card the football card kind of collecting game like yeah you know, management game football management game if Soccer i def theme. if i can squeak some time out i will definitely have to look into this to see the connection with hedera and then i might also take a look around I'm, i have a couple contacts over there see what's going on gaming wise maybe get a little bit more knowledge it's just uh the immutable ecosystem eats up a lot of my time and i know you do it does to you too <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> yeah but uh moving along uh next project up here is uh eth lizards i've definitely heard about this uh uh kieran from alluvium he's got the 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 uh, profile on his uh his x account for it i've seen it all over x with people having it as their profile pic uh my best interpretation of this is it's it's a community of Web3 gamers. It's kind of similar to what, like, Superverse is, maybe. Uh, it, it's a DAO. Uh, you have any uh, information on ETH Lizards? I'm, I'm a little sparse on this one. Yeah, ETH Lizards are, um, like, 
a, a DAO and they build tools for blockchain. They invest in games, but also they invest like through their community. So it's like community crowdfunding. So it gives opportunities for, you know, their community to invest in games and they partner with like eight or nine big games. They're not like Superverse, like they're not building a, 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 a centralized place for all the multi-chain kind of, you know, to come in one place and have one token for all games. And, uh, and they all build the tools that, you know, replaces the immutable IMX token with a super token. It's not like that, but they're, they're actually building games as well. Um, they've built like their own games that are going to be on immutable. That was part of this announcement. So lots, lots going on there with that. Um, and um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have a meeting with them and have a chat with the, with his team. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, that reminds me a lot of what Superverse is like. Maybe not exactly, but it's it's kind of the same uh, the same direction of what they're trying to do with their community. And uh, I, I can't believe it. We've been done how many podcasts. I always forget to do this, and I just remembered. You can't see it on the screen that I'm recording, but I am now sharing live in our in our Discord community what I'm looking at. So if you want to see what I'm talking about sometimes, it's up there for you. I'm sorry I've left you blind for so Oh, do that. I'll take that up. There was a bit of a weird sound for a while there while, while, you, did, while you did switch that on just then. So, it's, But that's gone now. So that's hmm. okay. Yeah, uh, next up, uh, Sunder Metaverse, uh, 8,800 followers. Um, this one, I believe you told me was a rumor that it might be coming to Immutable. It's not for sure. Cutting edge Metaverse RPG with a cyber, cyberpunk style uh, theme going on with it. Uh, what do you know about sunder um, it's just a a rumor with a community saying that um they are is it true that they're building they're saying that they're building on a middle is that true it's not been announced by them or immutable but they are a polygon game like so it would make sense that they are um so i dare say that rumor might come true but i just thought we'd check it in here and try we try to be alpha don't don't uh, go and um Put your house on the uh, bet on that this that you know that this game will be on immutable but yeah we'll keep an eye on it, it looked pretty cool as well that's why when i took looked at the video of it and uh the gameplay it looks really really cr like high level quality graphics um you know pretty cool dark themed world what you're showing right now actually yeah um yeah that's all that's all i know about it <laughs> listening to you and uh yeah this one like Man, I, I, it's definitely got the cyberpunk feel to it for sure. And uh, like you said, it is only a rumor at this time. So yeah, don't go bet your house on it. You shouldn't bet your house on anything. It's your house. You got to live in it, you know? <laughs> Next up, we've got uh, Beyond. Oh, wait. What was this one? Uh, Beyond, Beyond Earth? Yeah, Beyond Earth MMORPG. Thanks for the assist there. I... It's a mobile game. Um, looks pretty indie style. A bit of farming to it, and you know, like just a, like a little world that you run around on your mobile and live in a futuristic world. And yeah, we'll see what happens. It's uh, they announced, but it hasn't been responded to by Immutable, or it is. Uh, yes, Immutable said welcome, so they've given the the, the thumbs up to it. What did you think about it? Did you do any research? On it? Yeah, I, I tried. Followers. Yeah, that's the weird part is they got all these followers, 35,000 followers. And like, I couldn't find a lot of information and be, besides going into their discord. And I've got so many discords right now. I was just like, really, you guys don't have anything I can go look at besides going to your discord. So I went to their YouTube channel. They haven't put anything out on their YouTube channel in, in less than a year that I can see. And it doesn't look X account looks like you can build you know houses and have inventories uh kind of kind of fortnite style how you can build things is what it looked like in the gameplay if that's the actual current gameplay that they have um i'm showing it on my screen right now can you still see yeah i can see the yep i'm gonna say yeah. nothing playing just three three um yep Okay, good. Screen, screen. Yeah, okay, it's gone black. Yeah, I think it's more of a metaverse style game where you permanently own a, a building. Where Fortnite, you 
you load into a map, you build your base, and that's gone once you know, the game's over. So I think these games, it's going to persist throughout the, you know, you're going to build your base, and it's going to be your lo login spot or something like that. So, yeah, sorry, this one came in today, so I haven't done a lot of research on it, to be honest with you, but it's... Uh, they're joining the middle. Yeah, they, they they need to make uh they need to put some links on their X and stuff like that you can go look at besides having to go in their Discord. Uh like I said, you know, I only have so much time to research these and if you're not gonna make it easy, it's hard unless you're very exceptional and uh, we'll see what they come out with down the road. This next one up or two if I'm not mistaken, uh Bonsai. Very interesting one. Yeah. Game That's where you can level up and train your Zycars. Like, take it. This is like a TCG. Mate, that this one was again today, late today. I've I watched the video. I don't know if you got the video there. If you put the sound on that for a second, uh, it's it's quirky as anything. <laughs> Just listen to it for ten seconds. Which one is it? The they got several videos. I think that one there. That one, yeah. Okay. Is that it? The get what I mean <laughs> I feel like I should be on drugs while watching this for some reason paddle pop stick people going do 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 yeah but, but you know what the funny thing is? Light. This is going to be the first game to launch on ZK EVM. Well, the first one that we know is going to launch, everyone else has got five days to beat them. So it's um it's announced they're launching on the 20th of uh, I, of March. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know if I should be like concerned or just laugh that this is going to be the first one on ZK EVM. Like... I, are you not, really looking sure for a not metalcore, not alluvium, or wait, alluvium's not going to KVM on that. But like one of the bigger ones, you would like, okay, this is the one. Let's go. This one with metalcore, these... metalcore. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I... What's the first game that ever came out of ZKVM? Oh, it's called. <laughs> well, yeah. Isn't there a? I think you posted something about a tournament or a giveaway or something with these guys, or am I thinking of something else? Nah, it's something else. Okay. I them yet. So much in my head, I get confused sometimes. Yeah, but that's uh, <laughs> Bonsai. Yep, interesting game. It looks it looks interesting. Gonna have to see where that one goes for sure. Looking into that now, though, after hearing that video, you know, well, the game's definitely not for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm intrigued but concerned at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Another one coming out on ZK EVM that you were telling me about. Uh, we've talked about this one in the past. Skyverse. There's that verse name. Ooh, they're fine. Yeah. We've, al we've already discussed Skyverse. It came out. It mentioned it was coming on a middle light three months ago. Um, certain of it. And it's on my list for a long time. And um, so, yeah, I didn't do any research anymore. It's uh, MMO RTS, I believe. So big world and uh, it looks like it's quite interesting uh, i've just been waiting for it to get a little bit more information about the gameplay and be more open it's been closed betas and things like that so i've been waiting yeah thinking about it, i mean we t we cover so many games and now going back i think this is the one of them that we were like we need some more info on this because there wasn't much out there for sure uh the another one that we did look into in the past and it this one's one ZK EVM also. Vendetta Games. Not the name of the game. That's the company, but Chalk River. This is uh, very much like uh, Red Dead Redemption. If you've ever played that game, eighty-five thousand followers. That's a that's a nice uh, that's a nice following. And we talked about last time the graphics of the game on the like uh, the terrain, the scenery, the towns, or like the poker that you're playing the game, or the actual. Uh, players itself in the game. Uh, thoughts on this uh, going to ZK EVM? Yeah, we already covered it recently. Um, so I just, I don't know. Mutable does this occasionally. They release, they announce more announcements, you know, of games have already that have already been sort of like that we know about. So they like to do their little, I think, and it's maybe more strategic or time. So I expect it to have some, you know, they're, well, they're having a T, they're having a token generation event right now. So maybe that's why.
So, yep, I'm just showing a little bit of the screen there for them. Uh, yeah, moving along. Next up, we've got our Immutable news. Uh, Immutable Passport has 200,000 registered players. Um, yeah, congrats to the Immutable team. I know they're super stoked about it. They posted it on their X account. And uh, yeah, thoughts on the 200,000 users? Well, my thoughts are it's amazing because they've got Gods Unchained, which is gets about 50,000 monthly active players and 10,000 daily as a max and as low as 6,000 sometimes. Um, and then they have like what other games use it? Wag Me, which has got a couple of thousand people on it. Mm -hmm. So to have 200,000 200, people sign up for it and that's probably through Shardbound, you know, and Guild of Guardians as well. Right. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's probably it's a it's a solid number and it's pretty impressive for when the games aren't out yet to get people to, to sign up to it. Maybe a hundred thousand more than people that are actually playing games mm -hmm. um, or using passport. And but uh, there is a negative to it as well. I was talking to a founder of a game who I do a bit of sort of like uh, advisory with, um, and they. Uh, we're trying to get poached by another VC to, you know, saying come to, it was actually scale, come to scale and we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll give you some funding and stuff like that, you know, to try and poach them off Immutable. And part of their angle of attack was Immutable only has 200,000 gamers, like, cause, because of this announcement. So it's kind of like, it's actually, this just shows you how a data can be used in this world, doesn't it? Like that. It's actually, to me, it's pretty impressive for them to have 200,000 already. But they got, and I said, mate, did they forget that the Mutable's got 2 million um, registered users on their other chain? When they, when they, did they forget they mentioned that when they were trying to poach you? But, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so positive data, in my mind, can be used as negative data just the way you spin it. It's just, it's just crazy world we're living in right now. The information is the way information is, del, you know, divulged out with, to, to suit your narrative. Yeah. And, you know, that it's, <laughs> we're talking about these numbers like and this is for every chain right now these numbers are so skewed because they they are openly admitting a lot of chains that they have a ton of bots so <laughs> like uh, you can't even i mean yeah this is great but like how many bots are in these numbers and I, i'm talking about for all <laughs> chains including immutable so you're using numbers that are skewed and potentially false because of bots and using that as your basis for pro or cons of why you should go somewhere. <laughs> Just, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is scale's the king of it. They're, they're even worse than Ronin. They're really? Like a game. Yeah, they're the worst. They've got, they've got a game that they quote 2 million players on that they've got. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't find it again, but I found it once. It was in DAP Radar. The total value of the, of that game's NFT set collection mm -hmm. of two million gamers, the total value of the NFT, the entire NFT collection, is six hundred dollars. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but and you're sitting there using that number of two million users as a positive, as if it's, if two million users can't can only put six hundred dollars worth of value into an entire collection of NFTs. Yeah. yeah, they're not very good users to have, are they? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Gog, Gog's second tier heroes are worth more than that. Just right. one of them. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I, I I've heard of scale, but I haven't heard of any big games coming out of them. So that's interesting that you brought that up. But uh, yeah, I'll just have to keep my eye on that and see if they ever get some uh, clout going that is worth talking about but a game that is worth talking about right now for sure on the immutable platform i am in love with this game chippy clash chippy clash chippy clash chippy clash i just i just want to say it fast for some reason i don't know um i i can't i think we're lining up to do something with them well we've got our own little in-house private tournament in the gamers galaxy discord if you're not in the gamers galaxy discord get in there for the tournaments we got going on and I have had a blast playing this game. It's very simple, but I like those games because I'm a simple person. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just, it's got the leaderboard style. I got the uh, game up on the screen. I would expand it, but I don't trust Elon's platform because it usually blasts the music even though I hit mute. But you can see it on the screen there. 
tons of fun this game. Uh, I got a 58,000 score, and uh, how, how are you doing That's in the game? Mate, you killed me. I, I've cracked 53 or 54,000 or something like that, but that 58, between 54 and 58, it gets super hard from 50,000 oh, yeah. onwards. Mm -hmm. and to, that's, I was like 200th and you were in the top 100 with just 4,000. So it was a pretty impressive score for you to get into the top, the top 100. You got in the top 100, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I think I was 66 or something like that, or maybe I was in the 70s. I had several scores in the 50s, but that one time, I think I just hit everything just right. And maybe I was feeling it too. I don't know. <laughs> it's... It's tough, man. It's tough. When you get to like 40,000 points, like the degree of difficulty starts going up. Like you can, yeah, you can feel it. <laughs> yeah. What do um, you think of them scores uh, that are like 100,000 plus? That's well, got to be a bot, right? No, not all of them. Some people are just freaks, but there are, that just funny you say that. I was just doing some research with Chibi just then, just before the pod and saw that a number of people were deleted from the leaderboard for cheating so you may find yourself higher on that leaderboard mate in um you know because of a couple of people have been caught cheating so hmm. everyone there's always cheating in gaming it'll never end it'll never end and it'll maybe gas uh, not gas uh cloud gaming where you can't actually inject code to do anything but they'll be they'll find ways it's always but um in, in terms of answer, why i want to talk about chibi is that yes the gamers galaxy are partnering with them we're going to be giving like they have points for like a, like a zealy kind of tournament you know like but they ha they 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 are winners in our online chibi clash weekly tournaments or whatever they come out whenever whenever we can do them um they'll set the pace um we will be able to get they've offered us points for that towards that and i'm still to find out what that actually gets you i think it's in-game items and stuff like that you can mm -hmm. buy so like a soft currency um, we've also got two free mint whitelist spots given away. So um, that one will go to the overall leader, the winner, who wins. Whoever I'll do a point system. Who, if you if you if you played the tournament and you uh, come first, you you'll get one point. You know, and whoever ends up with the lowest points at the end of the season, if you don't participate, you'll get the equal to the to the highest points, sort of thing. So. Um, and once once the mid starts, we'll have a, a grade of who's done the best over the period of time, and that person will win a mint, and everyone else will go into a draw to win the, the free mint spot. So that's 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 like a limited edition and 1,555, um, and it's a battle pass sort of um, like a, a Genesis. Their number one their number one like earning potential uh, mint. So it's pretty cool with a pretty valuable uh, NFT. Yeah, the the the, uh, the first time I seen this game, I had it completely wrong on what style of game it was, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's just the one mode, too, survival mode. They got some other stuff coming down the road. I can't wait to see what they come out with. And, uh, yeah, that's Chibi Clash. Uh, keep your eye on this one. It's We're having fun with it. If you haven't played it... Do you, do you want it? Yeah. What's that? Go ahead. Sorry. Join our Discord and uh, come and find out about it and, join and have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Chib Chibi Clash. That one pretty good. Chibi Clash, Chibi Clash, yeah. All chibi, right. Chibi, 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 chibi. <laughs> Next up, uh, yeah, you're going to uh, have to help me with this one for sure. We're getting into the nerd magic portion of our segment. Uh, Ethereum Shanghai upgrade is coming to Immutable ZK EVM. From my understanding, it's going to make it even cheaper than it already is. Cheap of the cheap of the cheap. Uh, thoughts on this announcement? So the Shang, I, I spent a fair bit of time researching and checking Google and getting absolutely nowhere. And just just before this part, I went, you know what? I've got access to Grok, the, the uh, Twitter AI, and chucked it in there. What is the Shanghai upgrade regarding immutable ZKVM? And it actually knew the difference between Ethereum Shanghai upgrade and immutable Z, um, ZKVM and the benefits to ZKVM. So that was amazing. Like this AI is taking over the world, mate. Seriously. Wow. Um, I had no coming in here. I was gonna. I was literally gonna say, oh, man, I didn't find out enough. Let's cut it. And <laughs> right now, it's so important what it's what this is. Ultimately, right. Shanghai is the ability to unstake um, in, on Ethereum. So when that upgrade was the ability to, for validators to unstake their 32 ETH 
Um, before that, if you locked up your 32 ETH in a validator, you couldn't un unstake it. Okay. So, so, and that's was that was the main update of it. But it also has from immutable going, it has other benefits as well, like um, shadow proving, which so it wasn't just that; but it was other things as well. And sh one of those is shadow proving, which is like proving mo multiple requests with different provers at the same time. So increasing, so instead of being able to do one transaction, at, you know, at the, at the limit, you could do two. So that this will massively increase the the bandwidth or the TPS capability. You know, zk EVM is quite low um, compared to StarkX. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it was like nine nine hundred per second, where StarkX is nine thousand. Okay. Or seven hundred and fifty. So this will massively increase that um, to go closer to um uh, stark x and it also brings it closer to formidable to be to be able to use all the tools and the network effects of ethereum they have to be identical and this they have to do that otherwise it, they wouldn't be able to be identical it's absolutely needed so this is another step towards um being closer to ethereum um, and now they can now implement those provers from it we know now that we knew found out recently that they were using a proof of stake on axelar to do all their so, uh, proving, which is like, you know, a, a workaround for now. Now they can implement the um, the the uh, Polygon Zero, which is the Ethereum equivalent prover. Oh wow! So I'm sorry if I'm losing it. Yeah. So this was the block, one of the blockers. I don't know how big a change it was for Immutable, but it was. Um, it's only on testnet right now. For it happened on the 12th, and on the 26th, it's going to be on mainnet. Um, but yeah, it's larger scale and um, you know, and the ability to have multiple provers and therefore more decentralization as well. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's upgrades to the highway basically. So yeah, obviously, you got to have the high TPS. Uh, that's transactions per second. If you don't know, uh, it's it's how things work. And if you don't have those high transactions per second you're going to get bogged down it gets slow it gets expensive and you don't want that we, we know how it's like an, an l1 and we definitely don't want that on l2 <laughs> uh, uh beam uh they're getting uh, zero gas fees on sphere their their marketplace uh for immutable passport users immutable is sponsoring all the transactions so it sounds like uh, immutable is trying to boost beams marketplace and they're like we'll we'll pick up the bill you just start trading on your marketplace uh thoughts on this yeah, just gas free on on still on immutable get marketplace which is great yeah if you use passport that is um with the couple of days ago we had the f uh uh blobs implemented it probably not that big a deal for most of us uh, because it's going to be really cheap to do transactions um i'm actually in the process of working out uh if that's implemented yet on well working t dealing with the devs um they're in conversation with me right now and they're kind of avoiding the question for some reason um i think i might have misunderstood something maybe blobs automatically work but i was under the impression that blobs and um this new upgrade of blobs is need to be built for um but i'll find out soon maybe next episode we'll go into a bit more depth on that um and but that means that 10 times even cheaper than it was before to do gas fees so in the in the less than a cent for fees, so all those zero gas fees is great and better and for friction for mass adoption um, for you and I that are Web three players, I don't think it really matters that much. Yeah, yeah, cheap fees, man. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. People like less cost. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, this next up here, Immutable makes it easy to build great Web3 games. Yeah, of course they do. That's why they're awesome. Uh, this is the uh, Mutable Minting API. We've kind of talked about this uh, with Tao in our in our episode with him. Yeah. I think it was episode 31 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And then we covered a yeah. little bit more of it on 32. But yeah, uh, this Minting API thing is absolutely a game changer. I'm going to let you handle this one too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I didn't really find out too much different than I found out before. It's very technical that I'm even struggling to understand it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think even I, I mean, as in someone that's a software developer and doesn't work in this type of thing at all, but it, I should understand a bit more. But I don't, I'm struggling to understand it enough to be able to play, talk about it in a low level terms, you know, that so everyone will understand. But it's ultimately, it's just what, 
way more safety uh, for the, for minting and more streamlined, secure, guaranteed of you know working in the in the same way every time. Um, just you just know what you're getting and it's quicker and easier. So um, just a real revolutionary um, capability for b builders. And the, the number of NFTs that they can do in a batch mint um, for like, so if they want to do hundreds and thousands and thousands is they can do 500 a minute. So Yeah, so like, I, I think you're selling yourself short here. You used a really good example when we talked to Tao, if uh, the audience hasn't heard it before, but you were talking about how like, let's say you're playing Metalcore and you blow up uh, an opposing mech. And after you kill it, it explodes whatever uh, with some RNG involved. An NFT could drop from that kill. Is that still uh, an acceptable example uh, of, what, of what this is going to do? It makes that easy to implement. You can do that any with uh, normal blockchain, but there's a lot of limitations. Like you might have to freeze the screen while it does the transaction, all that kind of stuff. With the speed of ZK EVM and the instantaneous in transaction and the minting API will allow you to guarantee that what you want to happen in that scenario happens without the, without the blockchain stuff breaking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, you could you could probably couldn't you probably could do that. Sorry, with with uh, um, just a normal way of writing a contract, but it, it would need a lot of time and testing and thought process about what could go wrong and all that stuff in the minting API locks it all down to this is the one and only thing you can I want to happen in this scenario and therefore you you can control it so you know and it's very simple very quick to, to implement and there's low risk of, of error so it's more about just from a it's a real developers change it's got nothing to do with consumers this it's purely about how code works and solving problems with code that's pretty much what it is and it's a, a a big 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 task that they've built it's not something simple right exactly they've built, they've got, it's like building the engine that spits out the simple little thing at the end or building the engine every single time you know or building the machine getting building that thing each time you know like you build the you build the machine and api is like build the machine and then you just tell the machine when you want one and it pumps one out or the alternative is, whenever you want whatever that machine makes, you actually just make that yourself each time. It sounds so, like you know it's. I mean? like it's the, it sounds like it's automating. That, it's automating the process instead of having to do it manually. I think is what you're saying. Yeah, it's automating, but it's just doing it so that you know exactly every single time this machine pumps out the exact same thing you want. You know, right? Rather than building it each time yourself, you could make a mistake or a, a different variable could come in the wind could be different that day and you know it could make that thing you want to make a little bit different you know so that you know that's called state in coding and so you know you, you can guarantee the state you can guarantee the you know that the scenario is exactly what you want and that it won't have any issues and it takes a lot of work up front to build that but it's very simple once it's built like to use and that's what the immutable's done they spent a year building it and They've got it ready to go, and it's going to change um, the way games mint in Immutable for sure. That would be crazy not to use it. Awesome, yeah. I'm glad they're uh, implementing this stuff. They're they're advancing the toolkit for the space, and that's what the space needs. Uh, this next one up, uh, this is a huge announcement. I know we wanted more information for sure, but the main quest. Oh, hey, there's my lurking llama underneath there. Oh yeah, I like that guy. We talked about this earlier. He's so snarky. But yes, the main quest, uh, I, I kind of feel like this is going to be an achievement style. You've talked about this in the past where it's like Steam and there's achievements involved. And I have a feeling this is that. Uh, we need more information, though. I, I know you wanted more information on this. Look at that, 1.2 million views. Oh, that's huge. Thoughts on this, Rubik? Yeah, I'm excited about what this is going to be and what are they going to drop is going to be NFTs and tokens and, you know, like, is it going to be, uh, what's the quest rewards going to be? They've got something up their sleeve. You know it. They've been building it. It's, it they've hyped it again. Again, they've hyped it. Like, there was an announcement of an announcement and then the next day was the <laughs> announcement of this. And then I'm like, I said to Jelly, if this isn't actually something, I'm going to be so annoyed. And, of course, it's... It, it, what the day came of the countdown 
and it's pretty much just an announcement still. Mm -hmm. Like so, like I don't understand why they think that's benefiting them to do constantly do this, like just constantly announce things so hype, so much waiting. Like just just do something what Chibi did, which we didn't talk about. Uh, like they announced they're building on Immutable, and you could go that day. You could go to their web page, sign in with Passport, which is a Immutable tool, and play the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, announcement, those two days counting down to this should have been, bang, on that day, the main quest is here, this is what it is. Not two days of countdown to then it be popped into the passport and then still just be an announcement. Like, it's moments like these I go, I get why Ron, Ron, Ron dogs say this stuff, mate, you know? Like, right. it, it, it's, it's annoyed me, mate, to be honest. This is the first time I've felt annoyed by by an announcement from Immutable for a long like ever like maybe because we've been waiting for so long for ZKVM to come and so long for Passport it got announced in February 2023 and it's still not really usable yet like you know like and we and this one was just another one how long is it going to be before we get to do the main quest this is my question and that's it would I'm I'm I got a little you can probably tell a little bit sour in taste in my mouth with this one yeah we're we're in the segment of what what pisses us off this week we did forget it so that's our second blooper today but uh yeah that was you you put that very well uh i do want to say that this reminds me of the same style of what they did with the polygon announcement it came out everybody was underwhelmed six months later we're like oh okay so maybe that's how they're just doing things and yes the ron dogs they they like to say pure announcements and like I think in most cases, it's not pure nonsense. This one, yeah, it was kind of, but I'm gonna give them some time and see if they follow the same suit of what they've done in the past of like throw it out there. You know, you gotta keep some hype, some sizzle going. You know, every every network kind of does it. I'm, I'm gonna give them a little bit of a pass on it. Did I want to see more? Absolutely. Um, but I, I have a feeling it's it's gonna be well worth the wait. And if it's not, then yes, you you can be doubly pissed off <laughs> about that so for sure and uh yeah what what pisses me off this week uh i'm gonna keep it nice and short and sweet uh fiat money i'm just getting really angry with fiat money it's robbing people that have worked hard in their lives and it's putting me in a position to where i should be at my age right now just worrying about simple retirement accounts not taking risk and because of fiat money i don't have that option i have to go out and play with magic internet money and put money into games and stuff not that it's my uh, exact retirement account but like in a normal scenario i shouldn't be doing this but because of fiat money and what it is i have to so fiat money pisses me off this week any thoughts on that i just got literally muted until right at the end i don't know what's going on with my computer poor internet again but yeah i caught the fiat thing oh and i know you're uh I know your, your thinks, th thoughts on Fiat, so I'll just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> like I always say, I've been saying it for years, uh, money goes where it's treated well, and uh, we're not being treated well in Fiat, so that's what pisses me off this week. Yeah, I don't. when I got segmented over, that's why I missed that, but that's all right. We recovered, and we, we did our segment. Uh, next up, we've kind of talked about this in the past, uh, especially in January, just the onslaught of games that came out. And it was only January, and we're up to 75 games in just three months. Absolutely astonishing. It is hard as heck for us to keep up with it. And, uh, yeah, we do the best we can, but we can't catch all the sand. Uh, thoughts on this, Rubik? Um, they talk about um, numbers like this all the time. And, you know, it's, it's great to see the momentum. It's, again... It's a strategy of theirs to show, you know, their, their momentum and it's working. But in the end, it only really matters when they relaunch and we're waiting for launches still. So it's great. Yep. But let's let's see the games come, start to get launched. And we'll start on the 20th of March. We'll start to see our first CKVM game coming out and the first game in a long time to come out on any immutable chain. So, yeah, it'll be cool. Awesome. Yeah. And... Uh... Yeah, you've uh, your your shorts, uh, not your ones that you wear, because I know you were gonna go there like you did last time, but I'm not letting you. <laughs> I'm talking about your ex post of information. Uh, what's going on with your shorts this week? 
Um, just got the points. So CTA partners with Watch Dogs. Uh, so an Ubisoft product um, for ads, for cards to be updated. Sorry, a new set of cards that have Watch Dogs game. The, the game Watch Dogs, I don't know if you know that game, it's a great game. Um, I, I, when I, I played it when it first came out, the first one. Um, and then Eyeball is hinting at release date and rebranded re to Pool Masters. It looks with a really cool logo. They're mints just they've just migrated. They're to, they're from Crow Crow Chain to Middle ZKVM just over the last couple of days. Um, so that's coming along. Wagner Games goes multi chain, joins base. Uh, yeah. We've already had this discussion about multi chain and the why. <laughs> So I'm not going to go there again, but you know, good luck to them. <laughs> 80 million. Scott Harmon's argument is 80 million wallets on Coinbase are, um, you know, going to open up to 80 million people. Well, just ask Parallel how many players they've got, and that's the game of the year, and they didn't get anywhere near 80 million or even 1 million. So does that, that, what chain you build on doesn't matter. It's about your game. So in the end, uh, you'll, they'll see that that was a mistake, and I, I promise you they'll, they'll see that that was a mistake. You'll hear in a year's time. You'll hear it from from him. So you know what we shouldn't have went multi chain. Um, cool. And last one is cool bit of news by Chrono Forge. Um, it's an ARPG, sort of like in the world, vision of what World World of Warcraft. They've got we had them on the pod, and they were just like simple little ARPG, and they've just sold a heap of NFTs and got a funding round and sold had a TGE. And they're just killing it now. They've got a huge, all of a sudden, just come out of nowhere with a huge audience and people willing to throw cash at them. And they've so they've got they've hired all these amazing devs and uh, artists, and they're built they're building a new mode which hasn't been done in Web three, which is when you dungeon crawl as the heroes, that people can play as the monsters to try and stop you from winning the dungeon. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. That, and, and that's the that's the news. The shorts. That was some awesome shorts there. Thanks for all that information. Uh, this next one up, do me wrong, Elon. Can I bring this up? Nope, you got me. You got me. Dang it, Elon. <laughs> I wanted to bring this up. This is open world beta from Alluvium. Uh, if you haven't heard about Alluvium, you definitely live under a rock, probably under two. Uh, Luvium just keeps coming with the hits. Uh, this is just a huge, huge ecosystem on the immutable platform. And I know they're coming out with a MOBA game now too, which is huge news. Uh, what's your thoughts on this open world? We're watching it right now. Um, it it's, it's, uh, just looks amazing. Um, they're really stepping up. And there was doubt for me because of the amount of FUD. The FUD was working. Um, and I, you know, just the shooting, like this, this just showing what, how much iteration they're able to do now and how fast. And so when that overworld comes out in a couple of months time and seeing them hunting those alluvials rather than going into those white, um, dots and, you know, just following around an empty, empty land and just chasing those alluvials around on the land and having to have a strategy to, to capture them. It's going to be so much fun. So yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to that game, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure we might have talked about this already, but I just wanted to bring it up again. Um, people should not fade Alluvium. It's gonna, it's gonna be. Uh, I'm pretty certain of it's gonna be a massive hit game. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to try the open world yet. I just tried the arena so far, but it's something I need to definitely check out for sure. Uh, next up, uh, oh, is this about us now? Oh yeah, Gamers Galaxy community, uh, what's happening? Man, there's so much going on lately. Like, you know, you've been doing just awesome with getting getting these uh, sponsors to come in and hooking us up with some giveaways within our community. We're getting some tournaments going. Uh, you know, just information's flowing around. And even I've noticed some of our uh, some of our people that are not part of the Gamers Galaxy team are contributing into some information in the space. And it's just, seems like we're getting the ball rolling a little bit. Uh, did you, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? Yeah, we're um, apparently, one of the Ron mob said that we're the only immutable um, crew, uh, what a community for, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's uh, if that was in, in a conversation with uh, Jihoz, so. You know, we might be doing something right if that's the, if that's what they think. 
Yeah, I'm going to agree on that. We had this conversation before we started this cast. I wasn't even aware of it, but Gio was just following me and he's following you. And like, I was just kind of floored. I was like, well, that gives us some kind of validity. Uh, if that giant of a guy is following us, he's relying on us for immutable updates. And that's what we want. So uh, we're going to stick that feather in our hat and be proud of it. And uh, thanks, G-Host. You made me feel good today. Usually you don't, he... but today you did. Because <laughs> he likes finding out that uh, Soro signed 15 games in in 48 hours when uh, G-Host only signed 15 in his whole entire run career. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just... While while we're sitting here, I just had a thought in my head. I, I got a Stop video. It. I got a video. I'm gonna make a video with uh, about Gho's following us. I, it just popped in my head, and now I just gotta put it together and stuff. So I won't keep uh, pumping our chests. We gotta do it now and then. Uh, next up, there is uh, the legend or the mythic, the mythic. I'm gonna start calling you guys mythic. I think I talked about it last night on our our spaces. We did have a spaces last night about this. Um, GOG had a town hall last week if you haven't heard about it lots of good information obviously some controversy tone in here he does awesome uh, uh, short summarized segments on it on his X post uh, you can go check it out there he also has a YouTube video of the actual town hall itself if you go check it out make sure you give Tone a like put a comment in there whatever it is it could be just put in there WT is ugly as long as it's a comment it could be whatever to help him with the algorithm we're trying to to boost him up as he is part of the, part of our team and does an amazing job. Um, yeah, uh, uh, thoughts on the town hall that we have talked about in length in the last couple of days, uh, Rubik? Well, you know, there's one thing that stood out is for me is the is the conversation I had with you know with Tom, Mr. Tom on um, on our post spaces, and that reaction happened live and set Chris off a bit and. Um, and uh, it's just typical of today's generation. You know, we were taught when we grew up to to when, when we converse with people. Like being a bit older, you and I, like you put your for point forward and and you discuss what you think's right. You know, most people used to do it work that way, but everyone just seemed to think I know I, I've come to my conclusion. I'm right, and I'm going to display the information in a way that I'm right. And that's what I took a bit of issue with. And what I wanted to say, you know, this is what you could have done it, the way you could have done it. Um, you know, he's, he's got a, Tom's got a really good point uh, about, about the, the legendaries, merging them and, you know, if you don't get your legendary to maximum, it's useless in the current game. That's the one good point he's got. So, you know, there's no point getting your legendary to level f you know, half as good because it'll just be useless. It'll be in your back pocket. You, you can't use it and you won't be able to compete with us and you won't have any way to, to level up the legendary at all. It'll be just stuck there forever. So it'll get to a point where anyone that doesn't have a maxed out legendary and if there's only a thousand of them and you need eight extra cards, that's only uh, potentially a hundred and you need all those people to sell their cards to be able to, to, to make the legendary. So whilst I said that we don't know the full picture, of how things are going to be in GOG. We, and therefore you can't really make judgment. I think that's a pretty strong point. He could have just went to, back to my first point and said, have you considered this? This is what I think, have you, is this been part of the consideration? There's also another angle to it as well. It's the angle of the entitlement that I spent money on this. So I'm entitled to have that at the max level and useful. Um, you know, it's in the part of that conversation I had with him private later on was that he wanted to have five of his founder heroes in his team because he paid for them and he wants them to be able to do that. And unfortunately, that's not how the earth works. You know, the world works or life works. You you don't get everything you want how you want it every single time. So this is, I think there's a slight little bit of personal bias of what they want in there in there, but there is a bit of factual things in there as well that aren't too that are things to be considered. So. I know I winded on about that a bit, um, but yeah, I just think we can, as a human race, can get better at communicating with each other and expressing our, our opinions on, on people uh, in a way that is open to discussion and co conversation. That's, that's my point that I took away from it all. Yeah, there's a lot of things I agree with there, a few that I disagree with there. 
this is a giant ball of ugly wax that is being dealt with now for past sins from the, the, the past regime that was in charge. And I can see both sides. Uh, someone called me a fence sitter last night, but I, I, uh, I disagree <laughs> with that a little bit. I'm not really a fence sitter. I just try to step back and evaluate the big picture of everybody's part in the cooking process. And you've got the, the master chef, Chris Clay, in here, who in a year time has taken a, in my opinion, a borderline dead project and put some much needed life into it and has given it a chance to succeed. In that process, he is handcuffed because of all the past promises. And I put on the spaces last night. He didn't even know about the reborn <laughs> side NFT. He Live, he was like, I'm sorry, what is this? There's a side ugly as sin yeah. NFT for energy sale reborn. I bought one. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just caught off guard. He was like, and that's just, just a prime example of all the things that were promised and thrown out there in the two years previous that he had got here. And his main focus, in my opinion, is how do I make this game survive and work? And then his secondary focus is how do I reward the OG founders for all the promises? And I think he's caught in a rock and a hard place and he's trying to to make the best decision possible. And from our experience in talking with Chris, he's an artist. He's an artist is what he is. And like it or hate it, artists can be eccentric at times. And I don't say that as a negative, it's just the way it is. I, I don't know why, I can't explain it, it's just the way it is. And so with all the good that we are getting from him, he's a human being. He's going to have some some downfalls here and there. And I think he's so passionate about saving this project that he's literally immersed himself into this. And you could hear it. Yeah, and in fact, I could smell it coming through my through my uh, head, my head, my earpiece when he was doing the town hall. You could you could you could smell the change in atmosphere when he started reading the comments. There was long pauses. Ryan, at one point, I think, was about ready to say, Chris, are you there? And like his, when he came back from, uh, there was a certain point where he came back and you could hear in his voice how upset he was. And I feel for the guy because I really think he's trying his hardest. And it doesn't mean that, you know, oh, we got to give him a pass because he's trying hard. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he's in he's a tough. He's also a really nice guy. Yeah. He's in a tough position mm -hmm. of how do I make the game succeed? Because if the game doesn't succeed, all those past promises, they don't even matter. They're gone, poof, goodbye. So I kind of understand what he's going through. And uh, what, what Tom was saying, and what you guys are talking about with the legendaries, I think it's going to give them value. And there, you have to pick a lane. You are either in this for the investment or you're in it for the game. I guess there is a third option as so you can kind of be both, but like in the in the, the spot with these legendaries, if you're in it for the investment side, this should you should be happy about this. This should should give value to the legendaries to sell them off if that's what you want to do. Now, if you want to be the game playing side, this is where I'm going to disagree with you on. I think short term it's going to give you a leg up, even if you can't max it out uh, enlightenment wise. For a while, you're going to have a boost to get through dungeons, get resources, and progress that way a little bit. If you can max it out, then you're going to have a much longer period of getting that leg up. Eventually, according to what Chris was saying, the Web 2 legendaries are going to be able to get to full enlightenment, and they will be equal to, and I could have sworn I heard him say, possibly better than the founders, and it makes sense. They can't have these founders be the all and be in. You have to have these to succeed in... Uh, deep content of the game because they won't be able to fund their project going forward. This is going to be a gotcha game style, which is crazy because when they originally said it, uh, Derek Lau was like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Well, I guess what? It is. I'm going to just say it out loud. It is. It's going to be gotcha cow. It's the only way they can fund this and keep it going. So there will be better iterations down the road. It's a ways down the road. We don't have to worry about it right now. But these founders, 
they're not going to be the all great special that we were promised long ago. And we have to, we have to accept that and move on from it. And uh, I know I went long there, Rubik. Uh, do you want to respond on that, that I just threw out there? Yeah. Um, I just think that that proves my point. If, if, if the people were saying, Hey, have you considered this as it could be an issue in the chat rather than this is shit. You're killing me. And the way the language, the way the language is used is what the problem is. And Chris is a quite emotional guy. He puts his whole entire life into his game development. And then he, then he gets, comes to chat and he sees this negativity. And he, we both spoke about this before me and you have been in the, this, in this world, like in this cold, hard face criticized regularly from, from people. So we're used to that. And right. And I think Chris, even God, God's Unchained wasn't so public when they built. So this is the first time I think he's had a real public facing role. Um, mm -hmm. I never used to know about him much in God's Unchained. And maybe you, I, I wasn't there earlier, so maybe I'm wrong, but I don't remember even who knowing who he was until God Gog. So um, it's, it's, I just think that we can talk to people better um, and, you know, learn some skills on how to, pr to, pr to present information for cha to encourage change. Um, and ultimately, sometimes what we want isn't right. It's not right for everyone. You know, like it's, for example, if we make that, that the founders are the superheroes and unbeatable, and then all these people start playing the game, they find out they can't be as strong as the founder heroes, they will quit before you even can pick your nose, mate. Right. They will they will not play the game if they cannot be the kings, and so if you want that, which is the, which pretty much what they're asking for, then you will not get whales to come in to the game. If you get five million people, you will get whales that go. I want a founder hero, and they will pay whatever they can to just to have that founder hero. Right. Because you've got one. Like, like in Clash of Clans, there was a Saudi prince that literally found about the game late and went and said, oh, I just want to max out base. And instead of going buying an account of someone, he spent, he just dropped a couple of million dollars and maxed the base out in, instantaneously. Right. So all you need is one Saudi prince and to come to, to GOG, love the game and just go, you know what, I want one of every founder and start paying whatever he has to pay to get them. You know what I mean? Like, and... That's what we want to, if that, that's what these people really want. They want their st st value to go up. And the way it goes up is if you get millions of players. Yep. And so why are you worried if the decision that's been made by Chris is for the benefit of the whole entire ecosystem and it financially benefits you as a founder, you should be happy and go, you know what? It's not exactly what I really wanted. I wanted to have five founder heroes and play the game with those five founder heroes. But in the end, this decision could pay off better for me if they get either hit mass adoption because if it's the other way around and i get what i want it ain't going to hit mass adoption right so but i don't think people uh, have the ability to see all angles they look at things and go how does this benefit me from a very small point of view and go this isn't benefiting me the way i thought it was going to i'm going to complain and i think and i'm not saying that's mr tom i'm saying that's what people do in life and they don't look at someone's got 25 years of experience and go how do we, what's the best way to make everyone happy, you know? And I think that Chris has made, what they're doing is made everyone happy. And the thing is, if the founders here, if Tom, Mr. Tom's right and the founders here don't work out the way he thought they would and there's some kind of issue, the game developers, they can change. They can go, okay, we're just going to introduce uh, this system for founder heroes. Yeah. Or staking, staking for founder heroes. You get more gems if you've got founder heroes staked. That's a very good point. Game. Very, very good they, point. They can, they, they can easily just change it, mate, if it's not working. So, yep. um, you know, we'll yeah. see, but we'll see. Yeah, and the last thing I'm going to say on it is people need to, as much as there is investment tied to this and all that, people need to realize and they need to always remember that if the game doesn't succeed, we all fail. And that should be the number one directive you know, and I think that's that's the that's the way that Chris is trying to do this. And uh, that, just give him a little more slack, guys. I, I get it. You know, we got to be constructive criticism. You know, if you got to beef with something, say it. But like, there's a better way to handle it. And uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, Chris sees the support that he has from a lot of us that think he's doing the right thing and making the hard decisions. And he can lean more on that and ignore those trolls. That's that's what I hope for him, so that he can have some peace and. Uh, 
Good luck to you, uh, Chris, for sure. It was good stuff, though. You had a lot of good points, and uh, I'm glad we talked about it. it. That'll be a nice segment to put out there. Um, this next one up, uh, Battle Bears leaves the Ron Dogs. Oh, say it ain't so. And like, I laughed at this because I already know what you're going to say, but I'll say mine. So like 10% of their gaming community just left uh, as a game. Like if this... If this was the equivalent to what would happen on Immutable, 27, 27 games just got up and left Immutable if this happened at Immutable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what's your thoughts on this? I know you've got probably one or two. Um, yeah, so uh, when that was announced, they announced it, and there was no comment from Jihoz or Psycho to, to um, you know, say all the best or anything at all. Um, you know, when... A couple, a couple of the, the wrong, wrong dogs, um, not Ron, wrong dogs. Um, oh, I think you said, said Ron, my bad. <laughs> no, I do, I do say Ron, but I'm just, I think wrong's better. <laughs> you can't spell wrong without Ron. Oh, so, there um, you go. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, so, but then about a week later or two weeks later, I saw a psycho write a tweet about, um, you know, uh, about game, games using blockchain to, to run run VC money and to get VC money and you know they're not really committed and then they you know they leave and then send them to zero like it's pretty clear right, so I looked up I went what is he typing that they they never write anything without you know without having some kind of be in their bottom you know they're always upset about something or angry about something so I thought maybe it's got to do with Battle Bears. So Battle Bears' website is purely, it's coming out on Steam. It's uh, no mention of blockchain at all in the whole website. It's, it's, they've done a rift storm, you know, and, uh, done a, and they've, got, they've left Ron to, to go to, to do um, non-blockchain gaming, I think. So, and that's, and, you know, that just shows you the type of people they are, you know. Like, there's just no grace. I'll leave it at that. Oh, they're, go- they're going non-blockchain? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, that's huh. what I think. Battle, Battle Bears is going to go to uh, st- the uh, got a Steam page, like um, sign up for a wish list. Their their website's got no mention of blockchain anymore. Hmm. Nothing's got their their uh, their um. T- Twitter doesn't have blockchain anymore on their bio, so it's like it's just a pretty pretty certain they're not leaving Ron to go somewhere else. They're leaving Ron to go to non non uh, blockchain. Dude, you give you're giving me all kinds of ideas. So like, I have a video I'm going to make now. I have a meme I'm going to make now due to your inspiration. And now I'm thinking we should try to get these guys on and talk to them just to see their angle. Like that, not to have them come on and bash wrong. I mean, Ron, um, just to hear what they have to say. Yeah. It'd be kind of an interesting interview to see how their experience was there. Good or bad. You know, it'd be like getting inside Intel. I, man, my mind sure is cranking. Well, I'm pretty certain that they've seen that how, how, ungracious and psychotic these two yes are. And, we got to get these guys and on going, and, and gone no i'm pretty sure the battle bears guys gone these aren't the type of people we want to be associated with and said well you know we'll go we'll go do something else that's probably what oh i don't need to, i don't need to interview them i know it's i know i'm pretty certain that's oh, part of the reason that'd be actually, fun bro <laughs> right, do it let's do it okay let's see if we can get them on for sure yeah. all right next up mine protocol uh they're talking to other people um i'm not really upset about it i mean whatever i i'm all about collabs man i'm all about collabs and furthering space if this helps them get bigger better stronger um yeah it doesn't really bug me the only thing is is you know if they're allocating resources to everybody are they focus fired like they should be or do they need to be diversified i don't know that's an interesting question uh your thoughts on mon protocol and talking to other partnerships so they've signed like 16 games to be part of their protocol, which is, uh, it's, uh, what's it called? Uh, Heaven. What's your name? Pixelmon. Yeah. It's Pixelmon's protocol. You know, they're, 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 uh, they're token and their ecosystem of something. So it's all, but it's, they've signed some big games and like Treeverse and just all the parallel, some other really big games, you know, like everyone they've signed is Chrono Forge. Uh, like pick games that have got a lot of momentum in the crypto space um, so be interesting to see if they you know what happens what comes out of it I, I actually haven't done it I was supposed to do research on it to be able to talk about it I thought it was quite interesting and I'm going to apologize to the, to the audience that I actually 
totally missed that um, deeper research for this one, but it's we'll we'll come back to it next episode and fill in any gaps we've missed about understanding what it is. But it's not a blockchain; it's it's a partnership from just two games together doing like shared airdrops and things like that. So be interesting to see it and follow it and track it. It's big games all together from different chains. Yeah, see what happens. Cool, very cool stuff. Yeah, I gotta be honest. <laughs> and you guys can get mad at me or whatever. I didn't even know about what Maple Story is or I don't know that much about it. Honestly, I just I, the reaction it got with it leaving Immutable for Avalanche was like the the second coming of, of Christ or something. I was like, yeah. "Whoa, what is going on? Why is everyone so upset?" and you know, a uh, Coop was making a big deal out of it and I was like, "I don't even know about this. I should probably be fired for not knowing about this, but uh I know you know a lot about this game. I guess it's pretty big and uh we create, therefore we are very interesting. They leave immutable. And I'm going to say it no, now. They didn't, they didn't leave it, they didn't leave it immutable. They left Polygon. Oh, okay. My bad. Polygon. Yeah, we didn't we didn't lose the biggest game in Web3. So <laughs> they did they dropped the ball. This is the biggest yeah. game in Web3? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 180 million, 180 million daily active users. <laughs> okay. In well. their, in, their uh, web, in their Web2 versions. So Maple Syrup, is ma Maple Story is made by <laughs> Nexion. Maple Syrup. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> maple Syrup is... Uh... That I know about. I know what Maple Syrup is. I got that one down. <laughs> yeah, they're... Um... They were signed to do the Polygon app chain, so similar to the AVAX sub chain, su subnets. Mm -hmm. um, and they are the biggest um, Korean developers in the world, Nexion. Um, and they make $21 billion out of these guys a year or something. I don't know, not a year. They've made $21 billion out of that, out of this franchise. Mm hmm. So it's a pretty big, that's, a, that's like a huge chunk of, that's like a percentage of, of the global revenue of finance, of, of, of like a 1% of all game for revenue glo globally per year. It probably if they did 1 billion a year. So, you know, over the last 20 years. So it's a pretty massive game and it's a big loss for Polygon. And it, was, it created a, the biggest news that, why well, I thought it was, it's the biggest news of our story this week. It's a huge loss for Polygon, um, and why it's a big loss is is because of, not because of losing at one single game that is not even successful. The perception of what this means that it really the whole entire Twitter went off and was like, Avax greater than Polygon. See, we told you, mm. and 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 I actually did a big post that Robbie liked, um, and from fresco saying what just seems like polygon doesn't know what they're doing you know and i went into pretty big detail a pretty long post explaining what polygon's direction is and why this might have happened and how it's not that big a deal to polygon and he followed me after that so it was a, must have been a pretty good post i think i'm going to do that more often instead of attacking people i'm going to be really nice to them and uh tell them be, and explain things nicely to them well take my own advice that i've given mr tom this week um, because, you know, I, I want a friend there. Um, I did start the post off with a little bit of insult. And I said, you know what? I don't need to do that. And took it out. And see, I'm, I'm getting mature in my old age, mate, finally. You catch um, more flies with maple syrup or honey. You know? <laughs> you <don't, you> catch <laughs> but yeah, it's a big it's a big win for AVAX. Uh, you know, there's mention of multiple products and tools and that. So they want to build their whole entire blockchain themselves. You know, I just think Polygon's... Up chains aren't ready for it yet. AVAX has had subnets for two years, mate. They've been around for a long time. They're just upgrading their chain to be 100,000 TPS. Apparently, they're pretty good devs. They're pretty good chain. They're they're on a, their own little walled garden at the moment. Um, you know, they, they, they've got to try and conquer that. They've got it worse than Immutable. They've won these big gains, but they've got no liquidity on their on their um, NFT markets. And that they they pump and dump a few every now and again to try and make it look like they've got stuff going on there, but. They do less than 50k a day average on their chain, mate. So it's an NFT sales and where Immutable does 500k a day. So, you know, like it, where, and where a wall garden. So they've got a long way to go to crack that. And, you know, so we'll see if that um, actually happens. But um, they've also built this thing called the uh, teleporter, 
which will enable cross-chain, cross-subnet communication. So that they reckon that if you've got liquid, like just like liquidity, how it, you know Passport's going to solve that liquidity problem for for, for uh, Immutable. That they've, started, they've just built that. So, but yeah, Polygon's lost a, a big one individually, but that's not their mission's changed. They're, they're more about building the infrastructure now and not winning the individual projects and partnering with people like Immutable, or, gain, or ecosystems like Immutable, or um, you know specialists that are going to have an angle, one angle, and build CDK chains on them and become the infrastructure layer of, of Web3. Sorry, I rambled a bit there, but no. I, it is a big news. It is big news. Yeah, I mean, uh, whether it's Polygon, Immutable, or even the other chains, uh, Avalanche is going to lose some games. Uh, Gala is definitely going to lose some games, if they even have any left. Ronin, uh, I hope they don't lose any more games because they just lost 10% of their games. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's it's going to happen. Not one chain is going to get all the games and keep them forever. It's not, it's unrealistic. It's actually crazy to think that's going to happen. Just, just think about all the other corporations out there. Google doesn't have everything. They have a lot, but they don't have everything. They lose out to their competitors on certain things. And that's just the way of the world. There's multiple flavors. There's multiple ways of doing things. So while it sucks that they lost a giant game of uh, Maple Story, not Maple Syrup, it's going to happen again to each and every chain. And just just lower your expectations to anyone that's listening to this. If you're a hardcore immutable fan, that if you know if we lose a game or here or two, or if you're a Polygon fan, whichever way, it's not the end of the world. There's more out there, yeah. and more will come along. So well, we just won. We just won two games from AVAX, Paradise Tycoon and uh, Heroes Chained. Um, and we lost Kadro to Ronin, and Ronin lost Bears to Steam. You know, so like, right. it's, uh, you know, it's going to happen. And every time that happens, each maxi crew yells out to the other one, going, suck it. You know, and, then it happens <laughs> in the end, and, 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 no, and they sit there and go, oh, what happened to us this time? Oh, you know, it's just. I did. I I did not yell "suck it" to Ronan when we got Treeverse or anything, you know, like along those lines. So I, I try. Do. I try to keep in check. I try to keep in check. Someone's got to. But uh, yeah. So yeah, I know we're running a little long here. We've got our last segment of the week. Uh, our final thoughts. Uh, I'll go first, man. I'm gonna go first this week and then let you end it. My final thought of the week is uh, enjoy the ride, everybody. Um, enjoy the experience. There's a lot going on now. There's good, there's bad. Just take a step back and whether it's good or bad, enjoy this experience because this time, this time down the road will be gone and <laughs> enjoy the craziness of all this. And there's going to get a point to where we're not going to have as much news as we do now and it'll slow down a bit and it'll be more refined and there won't be controversy as much and there won't be all this infighting as much maybe there will be who knows uh but th this time period will be much different down the road so for what this is and the craziness and the euphoria and everything that goes with it and the the traps the scams everything oh don't enjoy the scams they'll suck but you get what I'm saying is just enjoy the moment. And that's my final thought of the week. Good one, mate. Yeah, I've got three points that I want to make. Um, first of all, this week's going to be an awesome week coming up with GDC happening. And there'll be big announcements coming out of that. And big game signings and um, big game movement announcements. So what we're talking about, there's going to be more GDC. Um this week also, guys, is the first ZK EVM game goes live, and I assume Storm Warfare might go live before it because they said they're going to be first. So if that's the case, they might be live in the next three or four days. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you'll see the first game start to come into ZK EVM. Great. And finally, Ubisoft. So I've got a, a speculative, speculative point. Ooh. Um, yeah, like Robbie liked and tweeted about Ubisoft and... Ubisoft partnering with a mutable game, even though they invested in them, and they and they chose Watch Dogs to go with, like, to go with Immutable, uh, with CTA, which does not make sense. Watch Dogs is a modern, like, sci-fi world where you hack shit. Yeah, there's like 
Assassin's Creed would have made way more sense to partner with with um, CTA with or one of their other MMOs, you know. Okay. And I've got, I've got a hunch that the immutable game that's been built is a Watch Dogs game. It would hmm. make a lot of sense. Interesting. Very very interesting. I'm gonna have will to take a look at that. About it at GDC? Will we take? Will we find out about it at GDC? Ubisoft's game, what's building on Immutable. It's, we were told it's going to happen this year, early in the first half of the year. We'll find out more. So let's hopefully we find out at GDC. That would be big news to drop at GDC. So um, that would be amazing. A Watch Dogs Web 3 game would be so good. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good pickup on your part. I didn't even... I seen the announcement not too long ago, and I, I just didn't even dig into it more, and I probably should have, and I'm glad you did and uh, picked up the slack for us on that. That's... That's some good analysis, some breakdown, and I can't wait to see how that plays out for sure. Uh, yeah, great great final thoughts there on your part. Um, yeah, if you guys like this, uh, we are on X. Uh, make sure you follow us. Our Discord is open. Make sure you get in the alpha that flows in there. The, the sneaky alpha, as I'm calling it, that flows through there is just, it's like none other. And we've got tournaments going on. Uh, this will come out on audio first and then video later with all kinds of shorts that I'm doing on the side. Um, yeah, Rubik, uh, anything else you want to add before we head out today? So, brother, been a lot of fun again, a long one as usual, and wouldn't have it any other way. And hope everyone enjoyed it. Right, and see you next time. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be doing this again here soon. Uh, watch for us on our spaces that we're doing weekly. We may change up the time and. Uh, also, we do not uh, get paid by any maple syrup companies. Do not think that. Everybody take care. Bye-bye now.